Hello. Today we're going to take HL7, Health Level 7 Fire Records, which is uh, Healthcare Interoperability Records, and use Snowflake to export it to uh, AWS S3. Okay, so this is a, a fire document, and, and the use case is you want to take this uh, fire document, which is actually in, in JSON as well and then add some structured data in Snowflake to it and do this completely in Snowflake with only SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language. So we're gonna take this fire document, put it into Snowflake, and we're gonna use Snowflake for data engineering. Okay, so we're gonna create two fast healthcare interoperability resources records for the deceased patient in, in Snowflake's variant data type. We're gonna create two structured data records from Snowflake shared data and we're going to join those two records based on their IDs and use Snowflake semi-structured functions like object construct and array ag to manipulate the, the fire JSON data. And then we're going to verify those records exported as JSON. Okay. So the benefits to you are that you can use Snowflake for your, all of your data lake and data engineering workloads. And it's high performance governed e ETL or ELT with only SQL and you, there are no separate tools or data silos. And so that leads to a lower total cost of ownership with fewer tools, fewer data silos, and less operational risk. Now, as, as always, these, uh, these, snow, these Snowflake um, demos and the code is, is on GitHub. Just look in the description of the YouTube video for the link here. And what we're going to do is we're going to export it, and it'll create a export over here in the gzip compressed json file which we're going to open up and we're going to use the snowflake semi-structured data functions so there's many data functions here we're going to use the the object construct function and also the array ag function but there's many more that could be used and you there's even a possibility to refactor this using some of these other functions okay so we're going to take this json data so what we do is let's start running this in Snowflake now. We're gonna set out context, that just tells us who we are. And as you can see, this green light isn't on. So that means that we're not even paying for compute yet. And once we start running data, uh, then this green light would turn on and we would start paying for compute. So we took that HL7 fire record and we're gonna create a patient record. And that record is the just is a record that somebody is deceased. Yes, it's a little grim, uh, but the reason I used this one was it was the smallest record. So you don't have to get into the details of what the HL7 was. As you can see, this is a female, her birthday, uh, her name is patient Sherry Small. And, and so, you know, this is somebody's deceased, not a use case. Is you, if a hospital wanted to send this is to another hospital or a healthcare provider or payer and say, hey, this person is deceased now. So that is the use case. And, and also combine that with some other uh, information like their, their address. And of course, Snowflake can support the HIPAA, HIPAA standard in the business critical edition. So now I'm going to add a second patient record for a Barbie Harmon who is also deceased. So I'm going to add that there. And now we can see that both these records are in the variant data type on this patient table in Snowflake. As you can see, it's stored as is. You could always load it in from, let's say, your, your cloud storage in a, in a highly parallel fast method, or you can use the parse JSON uh, function that we just used here. All right. So now what I want to do is create a relational table with uh, Snowflake Share. So everybody has access to um, a sample data share called Snowflake Sample Data. It's the TPCDS data, and it just has some customer records. So I just named two records. One is named Sherry Small and Barbie Harmon to match those HL7 records. So I'm going to create this a, a customer table here. And so that just creates some synthetic uh, email addresses and their, their address. So let's take a look at that. Now we have our fire JSON data joined with regular relation on customer on the customer key. So this is a join on the customer key. And, and so in, in 
you know, before Snowflake, this would require, let's say, a data warehouse joining to a separate data silo or data lake. But this is all happening completely in Snowflake very fast. And we're doing all of this manipulation with just a extra small uh, computing power. So you're paying the fewest credits possible for this. So as you can see, we're joining this semi-structured data with that structured data. So as you can see, this record for Sherry Small also matches uh, this Sherry Small record right here. And they're joining on this ID right there, 6308. So as you can see, that's the customer uh, key right there. So this is very, very straightforward to do in Snowflake when you want to join your semi-structured data with your structured data. And now, so what I want to do is now I, I want to make one, uh, the target uh, destination for this is a, a JSON record. So what I want to do is combine those two using the object construct function. So as you can see, I'm joining the patient semi-structured data and the object construct function will essentially take that structured data and convert it to a, 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 a semi-structured object. So right here, as you can see, that customer record here that was prior to this was relational is now presented as a, an array within this JSON record. So as you can see, that's their customer address, their city. This is their, this is their, all of their address data right here and their email address and birth country. So we're at, we're, we're combining this, this two types of data, data types in Snowflake very easily. And you can see the, the original deceased record is, is at the bottom, right? So now, now generally you could send this as is, right? But we want to do something prettier. Notice this customer record is all, is not nested. It's, it's nested with customer, but we, what we want to do is we want to break out the address info and nest it further just to show that you can essentially recreate any uh, JSON uh, format using just Snowflake SQL. And we don't want to repeat some of these fields, right? So like the customer uh, SKU, which is this, needing 46308, that is already here in the ID. So we don't want to duplicate that data. We just want to hide that and maybe just send the email address and we don't need to resend the name. So we're going to, we're going to do that next. Okay. So what we're going to do is kind of a more advanced thing is just advanced data engineering. We want to nest the address and include for your comms. So what we're going to do is use, remember the object construct is creating that, uh, relational data into semi-structured data. And now we're going to do an array ag function. And essentially what this does is it says, okay, I want my, my address to be a new array, nested array called C address. And we're just going to include these fewer fields that were, that are not in the original, that are not in the original a JSON or fire representation of that data. So we're, we're enhancing the data by adding the address and the birth country uh, and, 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 and the email address and, and the customer SKU, right? So just, just showing you what that looks like now. So you see, we've, we've nested this data as well, right? So you might have a lot of nesting um, of various arrays of arrays, so on and so forth within your data in Snowflake. And so we want to combine it all, right? So we want to combine this newer method with the nesting of our relational data. And we're going to create a transient table called patient export. Okay, no problem. Let's, let's create or replace that. So it'll drop the previous one and it'll just create a new one called patient export with our unique to Snowflake variant data type. And so we're going to insert, we're just going to take that same object construct before and interjoin it with, uh, with, so we're going to take our, our patient data and interjoin it with our customer data over here on that unique key. So, and then we're going to insert that data. So let's do that right now. So those two records are inserted. And so let's see what the, the data is going to look like just before we export it. So as you can see now, it is all in one JSON or FHIR record, or it's probably more JSON rather than FHIR because I'm not sure which standard of FHIR it, it meets. But you, as you can see, you can manipulate that data to meet a certain FHIR uh, standard should you choose to completely in Snowflake. 
So as you can see, now we've nested the, the C address, the customer address, there, there's their address information, and just the, the columns that we want, such as the, uh, the birth country, their, 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 and the email, and, and their unique ID. Okay, and then the, the original deceased record is, is still the same. You could always manipulate that as well, but we choose to leave that as is for the purpose of this, of this demo. Okay, so this is ready to export right now. And let's see what is in our cloud storage. As you can see, this is a, a previous run. So you can always remove that op file. And so I'm going to remove it. And as you can see, there's, there's nothing there anymore. Okay. And so let's export this uh, record to our cloud storage. So this is our stage uh, in a subfolder called JSON, JSON export. We're just going to select star from that uh, patient export table, file format as JSON, overwrite if necessary. And so we just wrote those that that file to uh, our S3. Well, I'm using S3, but this could easily be done on you know Azure Cloud Storage or Google Cloud Storage. And so that you can know, as you can see, you could verify that file is there, and you could also select. We're actually selecting from that stage data here, but I think it would help for visualization purposes to actually see that file. So we're going to refresh our S3 right here. All right, and we're going to take a look at it. Let's see if the open allows us to see it. Okay, decompressing the, the JSON. It opened up off screen and I'm going to open it in Visual Studio. All right, and there we go. So it created this JSON export, uh, you know, in Visual Studio. And in Visual Studio, you have the ability to f format the document. So as you can see here, it is in, in JSON format. So it is now exactly how we represented it in Snowflake. And all of the records are, are in one JSON file. So the first record is over here for Sherry Small. And the second record is is down here uh, for Bobby Harmon. All right, so let's kind of kind of do a recap of what we have done. So what we saw, right? So where you what we saw is we used Snowflake for data engineering, and we created two fire records for deceased patient with a Snowflake variant data type. We created two structured data records uh, from Snowflake shared data. And so we joined the structured records with the fire data based on their IDs. And we'll use semi-structured functions like object construct and array act to manipulate the fire JSON data. And then we just verified those records are exported as JSON. So now it can be further enriched using um, you know, the tool of your choice if you want and, and enrich it back and forth within Snowflake if you wanted to. So the benefits that we just saw are the Snowflake for your data lake and data engineering workloads. A uh, high performance governed EL, ETL or ETL with only SQL, and there are no separate tools or, or data silos. And what that's going to lead to is a lower total cost of ownership with fewer tools, fewer data silos, and less operational risk. Thank you very much.